time, Hurricane Irma then expected to reach Florida again uh, based on its uh, present trajectory sometime Saturday. And yet there's another storm forming off the open Atlantic, Jose. Uh, how that happens and how busy the season is. So the guy who saw it all coming, Weather 2000, Chief Meteorologist Michael Slachter, is this an especially busy uh, hurricane season? This is the 10th or 11th named storm? What are we yeah, Jose is our 10th named storm, and we've had some other depressions and prospects, so we could have had 12, but uh, yeah, very active. This is the most active month in the Atlantic hurricane season, so we're not done yet, unfortunately. All right, so the catalyst seems to be these warmer waters, right? Yeah, what's, what's interesting, just to add on to that factoid that was mentioned, um, Irma is actually the strongest hurricane ever in the Atlantic outside of the Caribbean Sea or Gulf of Mexico. So those four or five storms that have been stronger in history all occurred in the Caribbean Sea or Gulf. So this is actually north of the Caribbean Sea, strongest hurricane ever. It will go through some eye wall replacement cycles. So separate from land, separate from shear, it's very difficult for hurricanes to stay above 170 miles per hour for a long period of time. So it will wane uh, over the next two or three days, but think about it. What would make it wane? Is it just that it reforms and... It runs out of its own fuel, so it kind of has to rebuild itself at this very high intensity. So, but uh, just to protect people from hyped up headlines, let's say you hear the headline, it drops 50 miles per hour. That's still a 130 mile per hour category for a hurricane. So we have to be wary of that. What I would prompt it to slow down to that degree? If it's not land, it's just the nature of the beast? Yeah, just it kind of can wane down these eye wall replacement cycles, yeah. the ebbs and flows, but it doesn't mean that it can't get right back up to high category five, uh, category four yet again. Uh, just for chapter one over the next two or three okay. days, I think it will uh, wane a little bit uh, before it gets towards the Bahamas and Florida. Now, a lot of people have been talking about its speed, that it's a lot faster than Harvey was, which could be a mixed blessing. It doesn't hang around and leave the type of rains and flooding that a Harvey did would explain? Well, it has a lot of inertia with it, um, but because it's so strong, it has a lot of outflow, and that outflow actually creates a subsiding ridge to its north, and that's one of the reasons why five days ago a lot of the computer models said, out to sea, Bermuda, or right. you know, directly up to New England, and it keeps on going further west. So I think people need to be wary, especially in southern Florida, not to think it's gonna make this clip. So as it's moving with a full head of steam like a bowling, bowling ball, uh, with this subsidence ridge to its north, I really think uh, Southern Florida has to keep very, very sharp eyes on this. Oh, I, right. yeah. When you say sharp eyes on it, do you mean that, that it's still going to be severe no matter what? It, there's no possibility that it could just boomerang or turn around or turn tail or go back out into the open Atlantic? I mean, remember, it's not a dot. It's a disk. Right. So no matter what scenario I see, curving in the Bahamas, going through the Keys and curving in the Gulf, there's no way that part of the disk of Irma doesn't lash the southern quarter of Florida pretty hard. And Florida is a very unique state, unlike some of the other southern states, that has a lot of big population cities right on the water. Right, right. Not, it doesn't need the rain or Lake Okeechobee to flood to cause issues. Uh, just the wind hitting these very high population cities from the Keys all the way up to, let's say, uh, West Palm Beach or Fort Lauderdale, uh, it could be bad news for, uh, for the state. So it would hit the coastline, then presumably move up the coastline rather than, I think in Sandy's case, hop over into the Gulf or what have you. What, what would be the scenario? Right. Likely? So due to the inertia, it very... I'm sorry, like Katrina, I meant. Right. It, it could enter the Gulf of Mexico technically, but I don't see too many scenarios that would allow it to curve... Uh, not before the state of Florida. So maybe a Tallahassee or Pensacola curve. I really think the Western Gulf is safe, according to my analysis now, but no matter what kind of curve it takes, Western coast of Florida or Eastern coast of Florida, Southern Florida and the Bahamas are pretty much in for some bad news right now. Back to your earlier premise of the busy hurricane season. This is the busiest early on, I guess, we've seen in a dozen years, right? What prompts that or is that cyclical in nature or what? Well, we have obviously some very, very warm ocean temperatures. And, uh, you know, prior to Harvey, 2005, 12 years ago, was the last time we saw Category 3 landfalls and all this activity. So there, there are some cycles, but there obviously is a long-term trend of the oceans warming. And that not only means that storms can get stronger, but as they approach land, they can uh, maintain or even strengthen, as we saw with Harvey. So I'm hoping that's not the case with Southern Florida, but if this goes through a cycle and then regenerates in the Straits of Florida, um, it could be very, very dangerous. All right. Thank you very, very much, Michael. Uh